Let's see, an IBM PC system for 1089, an Apple IIe Pro system for 995. These are not clones I'm looking at, these are used computers. With more and more people buying second computers and upgrading to better computers, there's a growing market for used computers. You can certainly save money buying a used computer, but how risky is it? That's what we'll find out today as we take a look at second-hand computers on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chiffet, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, I'm looking in the classifieds here for a used computer. Here's a guy selling an IBM PC XT 1983 vintage. He wants $24.95 for the system. I'm going to check my brown book here, which is like the blue book for cars. <laughs> okay. Says should be worth $23.80. So maybe it's too much. I should give him about $2,000. Maybe offer that. Gary, how nervous should I be about buying a used computer well, Stuart, like this? Stuart, I, I think I'd be a little more nervous about buying a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Well, what is it? Two years ago, the uh, PCAT came out at 6 megahertz. Now they're 8 megahertz. 16 megahertz and so forth. Even the new 386 processor starting out at 16 megahertz with the problems of 24. So, so uh, it's hard to tell what's coming up. Maybe you're better off buying a used one. Okay, well, if you're interested in buying a used computer, we'll show you how to find one. We'll show you how to check out that used computer before you buy it. And if you're interested in selling your computer, we'll give you some advice on that too. Now, one way to buy or sell a used computer is to go to a computer swap meet. We went to one, and here's what we found out. If you like bargain hunting, you'll enjoy computer swap meets. They're notable for their eclectic mixture of merchandise, new and used, from printer ribbons to complete systems. But in spite of their homegrown appearance, swap meets are shaped by the volatile computer market, and dropping prices are shifting the balance between new and used gear. Yes, I would say about 90% of the people here sell new equipment as opposed to 10% selling used equipment. Three years ago, we had many more uh, used equipment sellers, and as the prices started to drop, the, uh, the used people started gradually switching over to maybe some of the lower end new equipment, and now it's gone on full circle and it's mostly new equipment. The changing fortunes of hardware manufacturers left a lot of early computer owners out in the cold without any software or support. For those orphaned users, computer trade fairs and swap meets are one way to find help. They find this to be a very valuable place to find uh, software for those computers. We have in this show today three uh, wholesale software dealers who buy out-of-date inventory and bring it to the shows to sell. So they might have um, several thousand pieces of uh, obscure software. As for the individual vendor of used equipment, swap meets are an opportunity to present even a small collection of gear to a large group of customers. For them to see four to 5,000 people who are looking to buy a product in one day is quite an advantage to them as to what they might be able to see in their store, maybe a couple of hundred people. Also, it's a good place to get rid of inventory that they want to close out prices on. Even with the shift in sales created by dropping computer prices, brokers estimate that up to 40% of the installed base will be resold in the next two years. As more people buy computers, more used computers become available. Joining us now in the studio is Mark Couch, president of Interstate Computer Bank of Mountain View, California. Next to Mark is Stan Politi, publisher of Computer Currents Magazine based in Emeryville, California. Gary. Mark, you and Stan have both had experience with the used computer market. Are users or the customers, are they satisfied with the, with the products they get or the, the horror stories about 
bad computer systems that have been sold to people. Well, so there's forth. some horror stories out there, but I, I believe for the most part people are happy with mm -hmm. buying used computers. What kinds of people do you find walking into your store that are looking for a used computer as opposed to a new one? Typically we find second users or people buying their second computer coming into uh, our store. They're not uh, afraid of, of computers. They, they know what they're looking for. They know uh, uh, how to check them. Uh, so it's not really bit, the so first time user that's, that's, that's going We do there. see some, but typically it's, it's a second time user. So what are the most popular computers that are sold in the used market? Um, we've had uh, a lot of sales in the 2 Plus, 2 E's, and, uh, and now the IBM's. Mm -hmm. Stan, what do you see in your classifieds? What kind of machines are people selling and buying? Right now, the most popular are IBM and the IBM clones. Hmm. Uh, we find that all of a sudden we'll get a, a whole bunch of compacts or a whole bunch of printers at one time. Um, we've been trying to figure out what the trends are, but it's really hard because it doesn't last. The next issue, then maybe modems are, are predominant. Mm -hmm. Can you tell how easy it is for people to sell the used computers? I mean, you have to run an ad for a couple of months, or is it one week? Generally, or? one issue is all it takes. Uh, we ver very seldom do we have anybody coming back for more than, uh, to advertise in more than one issue. They tell us they are, they're able to sell it that quickly. Are yeah. there other ways that, uh, that people are selling comp uh, computers now, other than classified ads for in the stores? For example, um, online systems, things of that sort? Uh, some people are doing that on bulletin mm -hmm. board systems. They're able to sell it that way, or they go to the computer swap meets, uh, they'll put it on the consignment mm -hmm. table, things of that nature. It depends on how much time you're willing to take you know, what, how, val yeah. how valuable is your own personal well, how time. About, how about software? Do people sell used software also? Uh, we get some of that. <laughs> <Is> that <right? laughs> okay. Wonder where they get it. Huh? Really, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the online services, which we're going to take a look at a little bit later in the program, you guys really have different approaches to selling used computers. I want to hear the advantages and disadvantages. We have viewers who are thinking about buying a used computer. Uh, what, are, what are the relative merits here of buying it through the classifieds directly from the seller or going to a, a middleman like you, Mark? I think uh, we actually contact, or we deal with the person one-on-one. -on -one. They come into the store. We warranty it ourselves. Uh, we are in, in a location they can come back to for help um, or other products. And uh, but, but odds are they pay more for it when they go to you, don't they? Uh, it depends. Uh, through the classified, they might pay more, they might pay less. It really well, depends. For on example, what a uh, machine like this cost? This, well, this, is, a, this is an this IBM is an PC. IBM. <coughs> PC 8088 based. Right, that's correct. With a uh, IBM color monitor, we sell that for about thirteen hundred dollars. Okay, and you mm -hmm. just pulled this out of your store. In that's fact. correct. And what would the comparable new price be on a similar? Somewhere machine? around sixteen hundred, sixteen fifty. So that's would a considerable be a new saving. That's right. What, what about the classified? Uh, people satisfied there? I mean, do they save money in fact buying through the classifieds as opposed to through a store? They, not necessarily, it really depends. Um, uh, going to someone like Mark, uh, you're going to get your cash very quickly. You don't have to uh, take the time. It really depends, again, on your own personal time. And it's like selling a used car. You can go to a used car lot, get your money yeah, right yeah. away, or you can take the time and trouble to do it yourself. Where do you get your computers that you sell? Who sells them to you, Mark? We have a number of sources. We have individuals that call up uh, wanting to sell their units. We also deal with um, larger companies getting rid of computers and upgrading. Uh, also, we deal with uh, retailers who are overstocked with uh, uh, later products. Yeah. Now, one, of the th one of the problems, of course, that a customer is concerned about is that how they're going to make sure that the machine they're buying is, is a good shape. Do you have a, you have a program here that helps you yeah, out? Yeah, what we use to check the drives is a uh, program by Dyson called Interrogator. Mm -hmm. And it goes and it uh, checks the drives without opening up the equipment. You can check it and could you check. run it for us and let's check sure. out Let's see if I buy that machine that's in your store. Okay, <laughs> sure. Um, go ahead and set it up here. And it's testing um, certain criteria now on the drive. S spindle speed, centering, radial alignment, azimuth alignment. And um, if all the letters stay white, uh, you no know th those are good. Right. Are you testing drive A right now? That drive A. And it comes up and passed. says uh, mm -hmm. drive has passed all tests. And we can uh, go to B and do the same thing, changing the disk here. I think the drives might be one of the more vulnerable parts of the machine, right? Since it's got yes, mechanics in there. Yes, it's the mechanical part of the system. I think a lot of us have computers that have one disk drive that doesn't quite work right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Always copy on well, your computer. We see something here. white here. Um, okay. These are out of spec, so they show up in green, and it, it tells you at the end of the test that the drive has failed. Now, I take if somebody walks into your store, they can run this disk and sort of check sure, out the drives. Sure. We do it before we buy any of this equipment. We make sure that it, it works when we sell it. So. Mm -hmm. 
Are there any other checks that uh, a customer should, should go through? Or? Sure, there's, uh, when you boot it up, um, it'll check the memory test mm -hmm. by itself, so you want to make sure that it does boot up and it does read the DOS disk. Can we do a RAM check? I think you have a routine you can sure. run here that will check the RAM in sure. that machine. Sure, uh, all I can do is reach back and... Yeah, go ahead. While, you, while you're doing that, Stan, let me uh, ask you again, what, what machines are, are the hardest to sell, you think? I mean, what, what, what are the dogs that people have problems selling on the market? Probably the old S100s, uh, the, the old plain va vanilla CPM machines uh -huh. that uh, nobody really wants anymore. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, no offense. No offense, Gary. Uh, well, we're, right finding, just, <laughs> we're finding that people are selling not to get rid of their machine and get out of computing. They're really selling their machines to upgrade, upgrade to a better system. Is there much of a used market for the lower cost machines? I mean, people selling Commodores or Ataris or... We don't get too many of those. Uh, we also find that a lot of people are giving their machines away to nonprofit groups and taking the uh, tax it, deduction right? on it. In fact, we have a lot more people uh, advertising computer currents, a lot of nonprofit groups looking for uh -huh, donations. Uh -huh. And for some machines, you're better off doing that than trying to sell it because you can get more from, uh, as a tax deduction than you can yeah. uh, cashing out. Is your RAM test uh, working there? Yes. What well, did we find it, out? It showed up with a, a parity check error. Right before this, there was an address that it gave of the actual RAM chip that did fail. And there's a way from that address to determine uh, okay, what, what chip What number? Did what, fail. Was the, what was the address? It was 2004 with a 201 error uh, following that. So the 201 says that there is a RAM error, and the 2004 describes where that RAM error is hey, on the it? motherboard. Hey, what, would, what would you do if you found that? So on the motherboard, the first two digits describe which bank of RAM the error occurred. And since that was a, a 2004, it would be in the a third bank. And uh, uh, the second two digits describe which row. So 04 would be this fourth row. So it would be this chip here. And what would it cost to, to, to repair that? <coughs> Typically, uh, well, the RAM chip itself, yeah. only uh, you can buy them for around a dollar now. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so it's not a <laughs> so major not problem. Much. Just go, just go no, ahead and fix right. it. Right. Okay. okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Now, we're going to find out a little bit more soon about how you kick the tires of a used computer, and we'll take a look at an online service, a bulletin board that gives you information about buying and selling used computers. But first of all, what happens when your used computer becomes an orphan? Well, Wendy Woods has that, that report from, well, I guess you'd call it an orphanage. They're called orphans, computers that are no longer being made by companies that no longer exist, like this executive from Osborne. If it breaks down, you'd better know how to fix it yourself or know somebody else who can do it. Or join a users group. This is the San Mateo, California affiliation of FOG, or First Osborne Group, which has 135 U.S. and 22 foreign chapters. Each month, members gather to hear speakers, make their own copies of public domain software, exchange information, and get help. This, this modem should work on other CTM machines, isn't it? Best of all, users groups offer support with software and hardware that often cannot be found anywhere else. In this group, two of the members have their own businesses repairing Osborne's, and they bring their tools to the meeting. I know when I started, I got all my questions answered within the first couple of meetings, then I came back with another round of questions. And after a while, you start answering questions, and you pay back what was given to you. More than one quarter of a million Osborne computers were sold before the company went bankrupt in 1983. Since then, the users' groups have kept the machine alive. It's just because the companies went out of business, it doesn't mean their products aren't still out there and doing a good job. I use mine sometimes 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and in the six years, it's never given me any trouble. So I'll keep it until it, until it dies. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us now is Alex Randall, founding partner of the Boston Computer Exchange, and sitting next to Alex is Brad Rudick, vice president of CAS New and Used Computers of Chicago. Alex, we've seen two examples of how to sell computers at a computer store and also with classified ads. Now, you have another alternative also, right? We approach it differently. We, we're an online service. We're available all over the world, and people can log on to our database and find out what mm -hmm. equipment's available for sales. We can do a search right here online. We're, it is as though we've just called up the service, and it's now coming back and saying, 
do we want to search? We want to do a search. And we tell it we want to do a search. It comes back and says to us, what kind of equipment do you want to purchase? Do you want to buy equipment or do you want to sell equipment? In this case, we want to find out what people have for sale. So we type in sell, and it comes back and says, what kind of equipment would you like? Accessories, disk drives, laptops. In this case, we'll go look at a micro and see what they have in micros. It says, these are some of the makers that we are selling. And in this case, let's, from the list of possible choices, let's choose IBM and go see whether they uh, have any equipment here. Uh, it asks us what kind of model, let's say AT. And of course, we could have said PC or XT. Uh, at this point, it says, what is the highest price you'd be willing to pay if you were buying? What's the lowest price you'd be willing to sell, take if you were selling? So let's put in, let's just see whether there's some IBM ATs there under $5,000. And then it says, uh, uh, you've completed an entry and it starts processing that information and it does a search. Turns out there's seven of them listed here and it says which one would you like to look at. So we come back and here is an IBM AT for sale. It was listed in the uh, middle of the summer. It's got 512K, a 20 meg hard disk, a pro printer, a color monitor, DOS 3.1. It's uh, 10 months old and it's available for $3,400. And we could go ahead then and look at another one and it would come back and say this other machine listed on another date. Uh, it's an IBM AT68 model with 256K, 1.2 meg drive, uh, has no software, and he's willing to accept $2,700 for it. So this way somebody can log onto the service well, and see Alex, what's available. So this, this brings up a good point. Um, with the current IBM PC clones coming in at a fairly low price, what does that do to the used computer market? Well, the used computer market always stays just a little bit under whatever the current IBM prices are. So when IBM announces a drop, the whole used computer market drops by a few. But what about clone prices? I mean, how do you compare that? Well, we normally find that a new clone sells for about the same price as a used IBM PC. So that they're, they're comparable in price, and it's usually about 20 or 30 percent below what current list price is mm -hmm. for that same equipment. Now, Brad, what, what should a, we, we I talked about this earlier, but what, what should a, a customer look for and avoid? Buying. <laughs> so there, there, are, there are several <laughs> items that a customer should look at uh, in a used computer. Number one, I, first and foremost, I think the most important is to make sure that all the manuals with uh, the software and especially the operator's manual are present on the system. That's very important because it's very difficult to, ma to uh, purchase them outside of buying the computer. And uh, of course, there's other things you want to check, make sure the cables are all complete, there are no burns in them and make sure they're all there, such as the keyboard, the monitor, cable, the, and if there's a printer, you want to make sure the cable's there also, because they, cost, they can cost anywhere from $30 to $50. You also want to make sure you copy from one drive to the other, because what that's uh, making the drives do is it's making them read and write, as opposed to just reading information from a program. Alex, could I ask you to sign off here? Sure. So we want to get the uh, computer set up for, uh, for Brad, who's going to run some diagnostics for us. And, and while you're doing that, let me ask you, what's the size of that database usually at any one time, We Alex? keep about 1,000 machines on hand at all times, and what we consider a kind of virtual inventory. Uh -huh. So there's always about 1,000 pieces of equipment from every major manufacturer. And, and what's the deal? I mean, what does it cost to use that service if you're a buyer or a seller? Well, we charge sellers a 10% commission. We charge buyers nothing. So it, it costs nothing to find equipment. It costs nothing to list equipment with us. And we make transactions for 10% of mm -hmm. the selling cost. Is there a problem being a national database and that, I mean, I can never really get to play with the computer if I'm in San Francisco and I'm buying it from some guy in Boston? Well, our business is to be the neutral intermediary to make sure that you're happy at the end of the transaction and that the seller's happy at the end of the transaction. So we're in the position of really being a neutral party to ensure that everyone comes out of the deal happy. Brad, Gary mentioned the low-cost clones as an alternative to buying a used IBM or something like that. Uh, you sell both new and used computers in your stores in Chicago. Regardless of what kind of machine you're buying, what, what can a buyer do to test out the machine before he buys it? A good way to test a computer is to use a diagnostic dis diskette. And what that is, is a diskette you insert in the computer, and it electronically analyzes the system configuration and all the different computer components. Okay, you've got the diagnostic one in this leading edge and, and show us for example the kinds of things you could test on this machine. Okay, well we've got, uh, as you insert the diskette, uh, it automatically analyzes what you have and it gives you a list. Here we have a list of a clock, a keyboard, printer, and so on. We'll hit the F2 key to uh, examine the, key, the keyboard. We get a series of spaces each denoting one of the keyboard keys. And as you can see, we can just hit the keys. If it comes up, that's fine. But we want to make sure to hit all the keys, because if it doesn't come up, that means that particular key is bad. Okay. Let's test another part of the machine. OK, what we can do here is we can test, test the uh, monitor. We can test the monitor by okay. hitting F5. F5. And we've got a monochrome monitor only, so we'll go ahead and test that. And so we'll hit any key to go ahead. And now we just get a series of characters. It says hit any key. Now we get uh, a, an example of reverse video as well as blinking, which are used in some uh, software programs. 
Then hit the key again and we get a graphics grid. Make sure the whole keyboard is in center. Mm -hmm. And we hit another key which will give us a graphics demonstration to make sure that the graphics capabilities are functioning properly. Now, could you be running this diagnostic test on any computer? I mean, is there a generic diagnostic disk? No, there's not. There's a diagnostic diskette uh, that's available for every computer that was made generally. Now, sometimes only service facilities in computer stores uh, are, are uh, uh, available. However, a person such as leading, buying a computer such as Leading Edge, you get a diagnostic 4.0 diskette with that. But if and I wanted to buy a used PC, for example, I could get a <coughs> PC diagnostic disk and shove it in that machine, too. If you could find one, you could do it. Uh, they, they, they do sell them with the IBM PC also. Also, what I wanted to say was that if, a computer, if someone was looking for a computer with a hard drive, it would be best to, uh, to have a service uh, organization take a look at it beforehand because it's a very expensive the hard unit. drive is chancy, mm -hmm. yeah. We just have about a minute left. Alex, let me ask you, what, what's the track record on people who buy used computers compared to buying a new computer? I asked Gary this at the beginning. Is it any riskier? It's actually less risky. Uh, new equipment tends to fail because the chips haven't been burned in, and the older equipment actually is safer to, to own. Mm. Uh, as soon as it's been burned in, then you know that the electronics won't fail. There is, of course, always the problem. Mechanical components, keyboards, disk drives, printer heads will fail in time but those are most easily tested. The equipment basically is very sound and our experience has been that most of the computer equipment we sell used is 100% uh, uh, workable at the time that it's sold. Uh, Alex, how about, uh, about peripherals like printers and things of that sort? Are they really subject to, to more wear and tear? They're subject to more wear and tear because they're mm -hmm. mechanical yeah. and, and it does require more testing to make mm -hmm. sure that they're really uh, completely there. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll be back with a closing comment from George Morrow in just a moment. got George Morrow here with us. George, we've heard a lot of people during the last half hour say that it's almost better to buy a used computer than to buy a new computer. Uh, Do you buy that? No, I don't. I don't. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. This isn't, it isn't all negative, but um, look, for a good used computer market, you've got to have lots of customers, and we don't have that yet. We know nothing like used cars. You don't have manufacturers that support their used computers. I'll believe, really believe a used computer market when I see IBM saying, look, we'll take your trade in and then we'll sell it. That hasn't happened. Like the other market. On the other hand, there's been a real durable market in used mainframes, in large tape drives and disk drives and things like that. So there is a market there. But I'm afraid at the moment it's kind of selective. Now, the new, the new machines do have yeah. new features and benefits. Yeah, that's yeah. What I was ask. Yes, that's right. Look, the features change uh, tremendously. On top of that, the prices are going all over the place. I think if I were going to buy a machine, I'd buy a new one. It isn't a, now, on the other hand, look, the, who's, who are the main customers for these used computers? The second time buyer. Mm -hmm. So that says that there is a market there. I just don't think it's like used cars, and I don't like to see it pr promoted like that. You had a question about prices, Gary, you wanted to ask. Well, the, yeah, the, if we take a look at these clones that are in here now, we talked yeah. about the clones, and they're, yeah. they're selling in around the $1,000 range. What's that do to the price of a, an old PC that you paid a couple thousand dollars? I think it's got to hurt it. Because, uh, look, if you understand the clone market, one of the things the clone guys have done real well on what? On pricing themselves 20 30% under IBM and giving you more features. Mm -hmm. So if I say a used computer is the same price as, a, as an IBM. So what? So what? I'd rather have the clone. George, Gary, we're out of time. And we'll be back in just a minute with this week's Computer News. In the random access file this week, if you're looking for a new Apple II GS, you may not find many on dealer shelves. Apple reportedly is having problems with the custom chips and will not be able to meet its goal of getting quantities of the II GS to market before Christmas. There are also reports of problems with the operating system. No problems for fiscal 86 at Apple, though. Apple this week reported net income up over 150 percent over last year and earnings per share up more than 140 percent. The improvements were based on the recent cost-cutting efforts Apple's net more than doubled, despite virtually no change in total sales. The news not so good at IBM, where Big Blue just reported a 27 percent drop in third quarter earnings. This time, IBM says weak overseas sales are the culprit, adding to the problems of low capital spending in the U.S. A major court victory this week for software publishers. A federal judge has ruled in favor of Broderbund in a suit against Unison World. Broderbund sued Unison World, claiming its printmaster software was a copyright violation of Broderbund's print shop. The court ruled that a software copyright is infringed if the look, sequence, and structure of existing software is copied. This is the first time that copyright protection has been extended to the audio-visual user interface of non-game software. 
Wang has unveiled a new laptop computer with a built-in printer and an electronic disk drive. The Wang laptop weighs in at 14 pounds and will sell for $3,500. Two would-be computer entrepreneurs are hoping to copy the Jobs Wozniak magic with a new Apple IIe compatible called The Worm. The company called TL Computing is based in Riverton, Wyoming. The Worm will come with a disk drive monitor and 128K for $700. The Worm makers say it will run 2E software, but that it is not an Apple clone. Commodore says the rumors of the death of the C-128 are not true, that the C-128 will stay in production, and that sales are very healthy. There had been rumors that Commodore would dump the C-128 in favor of a new C-256. Time for this week's software review, and here's our reviewer, Paul Schindler. Well, no one's ever going to mistake me for Bob Hope. But I do like a round of golf now and then, and I found a good program for armchair golfers like myself called Mean 18. Now, first of all, it's just a good game. But secondly, it's one of the first games to take advantage of IBM's new enhanced graphics adapter. If you have an EGA board, you can run an EGA version of Mean 18. Now, what difference does EGA make? Well, here it is in CGA, and here it is in EGA. I think you'll like Mean 18. You have your choice of Augusta, where they play the Masters, Pebble Beach, where they once played the Crosby, and historic St. Andrews. You can also construct your own golf course. And you can choose either regular or professional tees and a beginner or expert level of play. Beginners get some help in hitting the ball, an act which, in Mean 18, takes a good deal of coordination. Here's a quick look at putting. Mean 18 is by far the best computer golf game yet. Others let you pick a direction and a club. In this game, your coordination determines how far and straight your shot is, just like in real golf. Mean 18 is $45 from Accolade Incorporated. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Javelin Software has announced a special promotion for its Javelin Spreadsheet program. The Cambridge, Massachusetts software company says it will knock the price on the Javelin down from $695 to $99.95 for the next 10,000 copies sold. You have to buy it directly from Javelin. The American Bar Association is putting its official stamp of approval on some 20 legal software packages and encouraging lawyers to only buy ABA-approved software. The ABA says there is a lot of bad legal software out there, and that's giving computers a bad name in some law firms. Lawyers in Southern California have started a legal bulletin board there specializing in entertainment law, computer law, and telecommunications law. Attorney Robert Cohn is the CISA. This may sound revolting, but scientists at Portsmouth Polytechnic Institute in England are studying the cockroach as they design a new six-legged robot. The researchers say the lowly cockroach has an extremely sophisticated system of mini brains that run each of its legs. They say it's the best model they've found for developing a legged robot to travel over uneven terrain. Finally, computers have come to the aid of Christopher Columbus, or at least the researchers trying to figure out where he is really buried. Four cities claim to have the remains of Columbus, Genoa, Italy, Havana, Cuba, Santo Domingo and the Dominican Republic, and Seville, Spain. A California anthropologist is using computers to study the strontium isotopes and the mitochondrial DNA in the various corpses' teeth to discover where the real Columbus was laid to rest. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Thank you.